The electric vehicle battery scene is heating up, and that's no exaggeration. On one side, Tesla, with its famous 4680 battery, already in full production and equipped in the robust Cybertruck. On the other, so-called solid-state batteries are emerging strongly, led by giants like Toyota, Solid Power, and QuantumScape, promising a true revolution in range and recharge time. While Tesla is betting on the structural efficiency and scalability of its current technology, its competitors are relying on impressive figures. Up to 923 miles of range on a single charge and full recharges in just 10 minutes. The burning question is, will this new generation truly surpass Tesla? Or is all this still just a promise? What's most intriguing is that, even with solid-state batteries being touted as the definitive future of electric cars, most of them still reside in laboratories, in controlled prototypes, and far from real roads. This creates a stark contrast with the 4680, which is already in use in the US and has a fast-paced production line. It almost seems as if we're comparing a brilliant idea of the future with a solid solution of the present. But the battle isn't just about who's already on the road. It's about who will dominate the automotive market for the next 10 years. And that's where the game becomes much more strategic. Tesla's breakthrough was understanding that having a powerful battery isn't enough. It needs to be viable on a global scale. The company has been fine-tuning its energy architecture for years, and the 4680 represents a leap not only in performance, but also in production capacity. Meanwhile, solid-state batteries, despite all the excitement surrounding their efficiency, still face challenges such as cost, manufacturing time, and adaptation to existing models. The struggle between promises and concrete results ends up being the backdrop to this dispute. But the curiosity factor here can't be ignored. After all, a battery that promises nearly a thousand miles of range and recharges in just a few minutes piques the interest of any driver who's ever had to wait 40 minutes at a supercharger. And it's precisely this futuristic promise that leads many to believe that Tesla may, at some point, fall behind if it doesn't adapt. Toyota, for example, is betting heavily on making this technological leap first and, who knows, turning the tide. But this kind of advancement requires more than research. It requires reliable mass production, something that only Tesla seems to have mastered at the moment. Despite this, the 4680 cannot be treated as a static technology. It continues to evolve, both in performance and in integration with Tesla vehicles. And while it doesn't deliver the absurd range promised by solid-state batteries, it also ensures a much more tangible balance between cost, efficiency, and safety. It's as if Tesla has chosen to play the game of reality, while its competitors are still playing the theory game. This doesn't mean Tesla has won, but it does show that for now, it's ahead in the practical race. Meanwhile, the market is watching closely. Analysts, investors, and even governments are monitoring every move of these two technologies with one eye on performance and the other on costs. The truth is that the winner of this clash could very well define not only Tesla's future, but also the pace of global electric car adoption. And if there's one thing certain, it's that this battle is far from over. In fact, it's only heating up. The internal structure of the 4680 battery reveals some bold technical choices that help explain why it made it off the drawing board while others are still in the prototype stage. One of the key innovations is the tableless design, which eliminates those tiny internal connections between the anode and cathode, responsible for conducting electrical current. This seemingly simple but incredibly strategic change reduces the cell's internal resistance, improves power flow, and allows the battery to heat up less during use. The direct result? Greater efficiency, greater safety, and less energy loss. Another striking detail is the material used in the battery's anode. Instead of using graphite, as most conventional batteries do, Tesla opted for silicon, a material with a much greater capacity for storing lithium ions. While silicon has its challenges, such as expansion and contraction during charge cycles, it represents a long-term bet, 
Over time, and with the right adjustments, this promises to further increase the 4680's energy density, putting Tesla at an advantage in the race for the long-range electric car. The cathode's composition was also carefully considered. Tesla opted for a nickel-based structure with a significant percentage, around 80%. This element helps boost the battery's energy density without relying heavily on cobalt, an expensive material fraught with ethical and environmental concerns. Choosing a high concentration of nickel balances, cost, performance, and environmental responsibility. This fits well with Tesla's goal of making its cars more affordable without sacrificing energy efficiency. But perhaps the most talked about feature of the 4680 is its energy density. We're talking about somewhere between 300 and 350 watch key, a significant leap compared to previous cells like the 2170, which deliver around 200 to 60 dollars work. This may not seem like much at first glance, but when applied to an entire car, this difference represents hundreds of kilometers of additional range with the same weight. This explains, for example, how the Cybertruck, despite its monstrous size, manages to deliver such competitive performance. It's important to mention the impact of this technology on vehicle integration. The 4680 was designed to work in conjunction with the car's structural architecture, known as cell-to-chassis. In other words, the cells are not only part of the electrical system, but also part of the vehicle's structure, helping to better distribute weight, reinforce the car's rigidity, and increase overall efficiency. This also reduces components, eliminates unnecessary supports, and contributes to a cleaner, lighter design. Ultimately, the car becomes simpler, cheaper to produce, and even more efficient. And the curious thing is that, despite all the technical complexity behind the 4680, Tesla's focus isn't just on building a powerful battery, but on ensuring it can be manufactured in high volumes. That's where the difference comes in. The company already produces over half a million cells per day and still wants more. Elon Musk is aiming for an ambitious goal, reaching one terawatt hour of production per year. The question now is whether competitors will be able to do the same with their promising, but still complicated, solid-state batteries. Despite all the potential of solid-state batteries, there's an elephant in the room that no one can ignore. The technical challenges are still significant, persistent, and far more complicated than they appear in automakers' optimistic announcements. Dendritic formation, for example, is a real headache. These tiny lithium filaments grow inside the battery during charging and can penetrate the solid electrolyte, causing short circuits. This can completely damage the cell or even cause fires. Worse still, this tends to happen more quickly when using ultra-fast charging, which, ironically, is one of the great promises of solid-state batteries. Beyond dendrites, there's the issue of durability. Although laboratory tests have shown good results in initial cycles, the reality is that many prototypes still don't surpass 1,000 charge cycles with acceptable stability. This may seem like a long time, but it's not. In real use, this means the battery would begin to noticeably lose performance after a few years, which could discourage any consumer investing in an electric car precisely because of the promise of a long lifespan. Solving this issue requires more than technology. It requires extremely high-quality materials and impeccably precise production. And speaking of materials, cost remains a huge obstacle. The most promising solid electrolytes, such as those based on lithium sulfide, are incredibly expensive. In some cases, they can cost five to ten times more than the traditional liquid electrolyte based on lithium carbonate. And that's not all. The purity of these materials must be extremely high, which makes the process even more expensive. Not to mention the controlled environment required to assemble these batteries, with dry rooms, minimal humidity, and equipment that is still far from being standardized for large-scale production. Another gigantic challenge lies precisely there, scale. Making a solid-state cell work in the lab is one thing, Manufacturing millions of them a day consistently, safely, and at low cost 
is a completely different ballgame. Toyota, QuantumScape, and other companies are still struggling to move beyond the prototype stage. The biggest challenge is manufacturing a solid, thin, uniform, and flawless electrolyte layer. Any flaw in this layer can harm the entire battery, either reducing its lifespan or compromising the vehicle's safety. Even with all these obstacles, the appeal of solid-state batteries remains strong, and for good reason. The idea of a battery that combines incredible energy density, ultra-fast charging, and reduced risk of leakage is seductive. From a theoretical standpoint, it truly seems like the next leap forward in electric mobility. But for now, all that truly exists are promises and expectations. Toyota, for example, says it could double the current energy density and reach 600 dollars by 2026. But until then, there's still a long way to go, full of testing, adjustments, and difficult engineering decisions. Meanwhile, the clock is ticking. With each passing year without solid-state batteries entering mass production, Tesla continues to gain ground with the 4680. Not because it's a perfect technology, but because it's a viable technology. And that, in the real world, is worth more than any laboratory prototype. It's a curious scenario. On one side, theoretical innovation. On the other, practical execution. And it's this difference between what can be done and what it is already being done that the game really starts to decide itself. Battery recharging is undoubtedly one of the most sensitive issues for anyone using or planning to use an electric car. Waiting for hours at a charger simply doesn't fit with the hustle and bustle of modern life. And this is where the promises of solid-state batteries attract attention. Toyota claims its prototype can go from 0 to 80% in just 15 minutes, a time that begins to rival traditional gas station refueling. This, of course, would be a revolution for the daily use of an EV. But, as we've seen, this charging speed is still largely tied to testing rather than mass production. And even when it becomes a reality, there are still questions about battery durability when constantly subjected to such rapid charging. On the other hand, Tesla isn't standing still. With its 800-volt electrical architecture and the 4060E's optimized design, charging is also surprisingly efficient. In real-world tests, the battery goes from 0 to 60% in just 20 minutes. And even with huge packs, like the Cybertruck's 123 kW, the time from 10 to 80% is about 30 minutes. Not bad, considering the size and range this vehicle offers. And more than that, it's a technology already in use and can be tested by any Tesla owner, not something restricted to a laboratory. When it comes to safety, the comparisons become even more interesting. The 4680 stood out for its robust design. The frameless structure reduces the risk of internal failures, and the thicker steel housing offers additional impact protection. Furthermore, Tesla's cooling system ensures the battery maintains a stable temperature even under intense use. In accidents involving the Cybertruck, it was observed that even in severe collisions, the batteries rarely presented a risk of fire, a fact that helps strengthen the 4680's reputation as a safe and reliable solution. Now, solid-state batteries promise even greater safety. Because they don't use a liquid electrolyte, the risk of leakage and fire drops dramatically. In theory, this eliminates the risk of explosions caused by overheating or accidental short circuits. However, in practice, there are still concerns about dendrite formation and failures in the solid material. Even though they are considered safer, these batteries still face technical difficulties in extreme situations such as high temperatures or sudden load spikes. This shows that safety depends not only on chemistry, but on the entire engineering process behind the cell. Another important aspect is durability over time. In this regard, the 4680 has demonstrated more stable performance compared to solid-state batteries. Tesla developed the system to support fast charging with less degradation over the years, essential for vehicles that need to travel hundreds of thousands of miles. 
However, with solid state batteries, this durability hasn't yet been fully proven. Tests show good performance in the first few cycles, but long-term consistency remains uncertain, especially when users rely on frequent fast recharges. There's also a curious detail that few people discuss. Even though solid-state batteries are theoretically safer and more durable, they're still being adapted to work with current electrode materials. This means it's often necessary to rethink not only the battery itself, but also parts of the car, the electrical architecture, and even the platform. The 4680, on the other hand, fits into Tesla vehicles without requiring drastic structural changes. It's part of a system that's already been tested, approved, and validated in practice. And this, ultimately, weighs heavily when it comes to reliability and real-world performance on the road. When it comes to cost and mass production, the gap between theory and practice becomes even starker. Tesla, with its 4680, is playing a game it masters, manufacturing on a large scale with industrial efficiency. The company currently produces more than half a million cells per day, with ambitious plans to reach one terawatt hour per year. This isn't talk of the distant future, it's a strategy in action. The production structure is already in place. The machines are running, and cars, like the Cybertruck, are already being delivered with this technology on board. Production scale is what allows Tesla to reduce unit costs, something no one else has managed to do with this level of autonomy and factory control. Meanwhile, manufacturers betting on solid-state batteries are still in their infancy when it comes to volume. Toyota and QuantumScape, for example, are still operating in test environments or small pilot production runs. The leap from the lab bench to the mass assembly line is incredibly difficult. This requires not only infrastructure, but also stable processes, reliable materials, and, above all, a complete command of production engineering. Any error at this stage could result in an entire batch of batteries being defective. And at this rate, it's clear why the market hasn't yet seen these solid-state batteries in real vehicles. And there's a very simple reason for this. Cost. Producing solid-state batteries, even with all the promises of efficiency, is still very expensive. The materials used are sophisticated and require extreme purity. Facilities must operate with absolute humidity and dust control. Furthermore, the technology for manufacturing extremely thin layers of solid electrolyte is still far from achieving the precision required on a large scale. Toyota even announced that it managed to reduce costs by 50%, but this reduction is above their own estimates at the beginning of the project. This doesn't mean the battery will be cheaper than a conventional lithium-ion battery. On Tesla's side, the 4680 also continues to evolve in terms of cost-effectiveness. Although exact production figures are not officially disclosed, Industry analysts estimate the current cost to be between $114 and $170 per Kiriwa. Elon Musk has already stated that the goal is to lower this figure to $70, which would make the 4680 even more competitive. This will only be possible with economies of scale, continuous improvements in the manufacturing process, and, of course, maximum utilization of the materials used. With Tesla controlling much of the supply chain, this seems increasingly possible. Another advantage of the 4680 is its compatibility with Tesla models. The company doesn't need to redesign the entire car to include this battery. The system was already designed for it from the start. This speeds up implementation and reduces logistical and structural costs. On the other hand, Manufacturers that want to use solid-state batteries often need to adapt their platforms, rethink layouts, and, in some cases, develop entirely new vehicles. This change requires billions of dollars in investment, which makes adoption much slower.